protein does a lot more in our body yeah. than just just uh, building muscle. It's vital for, for, for us to survive. I want to yeah. talk about the essential amino acids in proteins. What is a complete protein and what is an incomplete protein? Vegans, and, and are they getting enough essential amino acids? So these are the optimal daily protein intakes. Kidney function if you have too much protein. There's something called protein quality. Um, so how do we fix this yeah. for somebody that's on a plant-based diet. Because a lot of people are listening to this wanting protein to build muscle. Just some suggestions mm. that you would give this person to get their protein essentials, all the protein levels up to scratch. What sort of meals would they be eating? Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Nicole and Steve. And my very first question before we start is what colour is the table we're using? Because I can't see it. I know. <laughs> What's going no, on? It's covered in papers. It's covered. We in literally have got... I so many papers in front of us. I don't even know where we're going to start. This is this is a uh, like this is a it, we're, we're talking about all things protein today. Yeah, and everybody eats protein every day because we have to. Um, and um, we we have just gone nuts with the research on it because there's some you know we got some some basic information that we're going to cover, but there's also some slightly controversial information. There's also information that I don't think most people would know about proteins themselves because there's so much to it, you know, mm. is a vegan protein. What about amino acids? We're going to cover amino acids in a different context, yeah. like the roles of each of the, the 20 odd amino acids. Mm. But we're going to talk about them in the context of protein today. And and the first thing we have to decide is, is basically what is protein? And, you know, you, you want to sort of give us a, a definition of what protein is because it's, it's not exactly what, it's not this stuff that builds your muscles only, is it? What does it do? Well, protein does a lot of things in our in our body. Mm. So proteins are um, biopolymetric structures wow. um, composed of amino acids, which yep. there are 20 yeah. that have been identified that that the humans use mm -hmm. uh, at the, as we as humans use. Yes. <laughs> as well as the I know what humans. you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> um, so it's super important. They do a lot of different things. So a lot of people think protein, muscle growth. Mm. But protein does a lot more in our body yeah. than just just uh, building muscle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's vital for, for, for us to survive. If we don't okay. have protein, we, we will not live. <laughs> Very long. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, they're called essential amino acids, not, not, oh, uh, you should take them amino acids. They're essential. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, and there's some that are not essential and all that sort of stuff. Exactly. But, but what are some of the other roles of proteins in the body and, and what, what do they do that's, that's a bit weird that people wouldn't know about, you know? Yeah. So there's seven um, types of proteins. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, seven types. Okay. So, and people will, will know these names, yep. but they might not have thought of them as actually as proteins. Yeah. Within the body, so we have antibodies, yep. contractile proteins, yep. um, enzymes. Enzymes that do things in the body, yep. That's right, hormonal proteins, yep. structural proteins, yep. um, storage proteins and transport proteins. Transports proteins. And we can go like into a little bit about well, a well, couple of examples couple of what examples they are. A couple examples like transport proteins and lipoproteins like uh, yeah. LDL, HDL. That stands yep. for high-density lipoprotein. Yep. So they're forms of proteins with fats attached to them. So yeah. they transport fats around because fats are insoluble. Exactly. So, so there's all these different things. Enzymes are things that, that do things in the body yeah. that, that activate chemical reactions. So that's yep. very important. Break down foods and all that sort of stuff. Um, storage proteins. So yep. ferritin, for instance, is a ferritin, storage protein. Yep. Stores yep. iron. So... Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, transport proteins, as you said, yep. um, and obviously antibodies. Tell us about the contractile important. proteins. So yes, so the muscles. So we all know actin, myosin, <laughs> yes. working the muscles. So I just, I just flexed my <laughs> just massive bicep. This boulder <laughs> came out. I know. So it knocked me off my chair. Lee Priest <laughs> style, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger type. <laughs> exactly. You know, so I picked two old guys. Old I just love the way that Matt just cracked up as soon as you. Yeah, did I know. That. I know. He laughs when I when I do a bicep thing. <laughs> I know. Terrible. I know. So, so yeah. So basically, protein does a lot more than just build muscle, mm. and it's su and all of those functions are super, super important for our own, our survival. Yeah. So, so protein is is really, really important. Yeah, and 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 you mentioned these things called amino acids. We're going to cover the roles of them. Yeah. But there's three classes of amino acids. There's essential. Yes. Mm -hmm. Conditionally essentiable, essential, <laughs> sensible, and essential. essential, and yeah. non-essential. Now, now yeah. the essential amino is a little bit self-explanatory. We want to yeah. talk about the essential amino acids in proteins. Like, what, yeah. what, are, what are they? So what, we, they? Have, so there are twenty amino acids, yep. as I said, that humans use. Uh, nine of them are essential for yep. us for, for survival, and we can't 
our body doesn't make them. No. So we have to get them through di- our diet. Mm-hmm. So they're um, vitally important. Um, so uh, essential amino acids, so histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, um, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan and valine. Amazing. So they're the essential amino acids. Uh, as I said, we need to get them from our diet. Yes. When we'll talk about what foods have these in them and yeah. what foods that we might need to look at combining. But you need them. There's non-negotiable, you need them in your diet. You need them in, the, yep. in there. There's nothing, yeah, nothing. Or you can supplement them like I'm doing right now. There's That's essential right. amino acids in there. There is. But I won't go into details no, about that. No. Now, now, there's an interesting term, conditionally essential. Yeah. E- essential. <laughs> oh, my sensible, God. Steve. Maybe I should have cut <laughs> Maybe back Maybe you shouldn't have had mm. that drink this morning. Um, yeah, yeah, a bit weird. So, yeah. so they're conditionally. What, what does that mean? Like, so uh, conditionally essential means that under certain conditions, yeah. we will need our body may not be able to make these. Yes. So so starvation, mm. uh, malnutrition, mm. um, inborn uh, metabolic, um, er, you know, um, yep. uh, issues. Um, so, so yeah, so those that we have um, six of those, mm. arginine, cysteine, glutamine, glycine, yep. proline and tyrosine. Wow, okay. I've actually highlighted cysteine, glutamine and glycine for a reason. Yeah, what is And then that? the methionine in the essential amino acids. I highlighted all of those for because as we move more into talking about plant-based proteins. Oh, yeah. Um, so cysteine, glutamine, glycine and methionine are all involved in the phase two detoxification. Uh, of up. course, yes. Yeah, and I, we can go into this a little bit further down the track, but I see more uh, uh, um, a lot of issues in people following plant-based diets who perhaps don't have a balanced plant-based diet to get all those essential amino acids in there. Um, a lot of times have more issues with um, homo- women, I think more so because I see more women, yeah. um, hormonal imbalances, mood imbalances, things like that, um, toxic exposure, mm-hmm. because if they're not getting these amino acids in there, their phase two detoxification pathway will not function properly. No. They can get recirculation of a lot of these, you know, metabolized hormones and excess um, environmental toxins and things. Um, so that's, I just wanted to point that out because we need these proteins to help with that that our liver detoxification. It, it's so. really amazing because I remember when we used to do, and I'm talking about 90s stuff here, where we used to do detoxes and we put people on water fast. Yes. And it's like that was the great detox thing. Yeah. And, and, and we didn't know any about phase one and phase two, but, but proteins are a detoxification tool. That's right. And what we'd do is we'd starve people mm. and they get really sick and yes. we used to call it a healing crisis. <laughs> yes. And then so they get just get really sick. Yes. You know, remember Hippocrates of bubble do no harm, forget yeah. that. No, we'd we'd make that. these people sick. Yeah. Because and we just thought, oh it's a great healing process. What we were doing was slowing stopping phase two because we we're yeah. starving amino acids. Yeah. And as you mentioned, some of them are essential like methionine. Yeah. And they would just dry dry up on those. Mm. And of course because they weren't eating a thing. Yeah. Um and uh, they get really sick, and we used to call it a healing crisis. They yeah. get uh, the detoxification; they have to come out through the skin or lungs, their smelly yeah. breath. All this crap because happens to them. Do it, so they the couldn't... body's trying to get it out in other ways. Yeah, we, we used to have this massive organ called the liver that we ignore with detoxification. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, and all we did was rely on the kidneys. And 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 you know, you got to remember that that these were just water fast, so mm. they, there was no fiber for the mm. bowels to detoxify. Mm. You know, so so there was a, no B, no vitamins to yes. help with any of the enzymatic functions of the proteins you've talked about yeah and we used to and, and, and we used to starve them of absolutely everything and we used to starve them of fats mm-hmm. and fats are required for the gallbladder to be stimulated to get rid of the bile from the liver to detoxify that yep. so we had none of that going on yeah. and that's why the people would get really sick yeah and we didn't know this we just called it a healing crisis yeah exactly terrible yeah. so it's one of these old things that, that now hopefully you know and then i remember in the early days we, we they, they discovered proteins were very good for detoxification you know late 90s and i worked for a company i mentioned the name of the product but we couldn't think of a name but it would it would well, i don't think it's around now. it was called thermophase detox no i think it is still, yeah yeah oh, it might yeah. not be around now anyway. i don't know if yeah. it is not yeah but but that that was because it was thermogenic we put mm. cla fat in it mm. and it was for phase two detox and so we'd come up with this name thermophase detox so that's yes <laughs> so it's a protein powder for detox yeah rice base and it, again it could be totally different now so yeah but, but isn't that amazing that yeah. that proteins people don't think of that as you know people think of meat as like toxic or something yeah yet the amino acids in there the mm. essential aminos and some of the conditionally essential mm. are with detox yeah, well, that's like all the juice fast people do now 
yeah. they're, they're, they're for, for detoxification and cleansing. Yeah. Well, no, you really need the proteins in there for that phase of detox in the liver. So, but also yeah. the juice fast is that they get rid of the fiber, so your bowels yeah. didn't work, and that's exactly. a great detox agent. That's right. Exactly. It's the most bizarre it thing. Is. It and is. Most, so, so amino acids are great for detox, and mm. proteins are great for detox. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's absolutely incredible um, yeah. how they all work. Now, we've gone through sort of what what the, what what they, the types the of proteins types. are. Now, now, I guess the the elephant in the room is is where to, what where do we find proteins in the diet? Yeah, okay. So protein, I mean, I, I guess a lot of people pretty much know all your animal based meats, yep. so chicken, beef, um, fish, mm. those types of things, and then eggs, yep. dairy. Um, so anything animal based protein, obviously, and then our plant based proteins as well. So we do get proteins out of plants. Yes. So. Um, but we can talk about what is a complete protein and what is an incomplete protein. I know it's a, it's a tricky, tricky thing. So, so okay, we, we we know there's complete proteins like the animal proteins. That's yeah. great, and you've got eggs and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. included. Now, now, and there's there's the omnivores, and then we've got the the vegans mm-hmm. and the vegetarians are yeah. three sort of classes, and often proteins are sort of highlighted in these particular people. So omnivores are like you and I that eat mm-hmm. meat and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the, the vegans that have no animal products. And you've got the vegetarians, which could be lacto-ovo vegetarians, which mm-hmm. means they get milk and they get, um, eggs, you know, eggs. Things, yeah. So, so you know, but, but the vegans are the ones that are, you know, questionably low in, in protein. But mm-hmm. but so so let's talk about those vegan proteins. Mm-hmm. What, what if you, I've got a big list here of, of where you get protein from. It's basically yeah. everywhere. But everywhere, yeah. All proteins are not made equally, are they? No. So a complete protein, I mean, most people probably know this, but a complete protein is one that contains all the nine essential amino acids. Yes. That, as, I, as we said, that you need to get from your diet because your body can't make them themselves. Yeah. So it contains all of them. So a meat will contain, you know, a, a steak will contain nine. So yeah. A piece of chicken will contain all nine. Mm. And then you have your plant-based proteins where you might have five of the nine mm. in one type of, say, a grain, or you might have four in a a legume or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not it's not complete. Yeah. So therefore you have to combine or make sure we will talk about that, <laughs> the combination diet. Yes. Um, when you combine some plant-based products together mm-hmm. to create a complete protein. Yeah. And, and you don't have to have complete protein at every meal no. all, all day, every day. You don't. You know, but 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 it, it's it's good to get them eventually in a diet. Now, there are some studies on, on and I've picked on vegans a bit here, and what I've also done in your honour, because you're part German, I is I've got German. two German studies in this, in this, in this podcast today. Isn't that incredible? That's awesome. Um, the Germans are very, very forward thinking in there. They're research. very forward thinking. And I've got a Dutch study here on vegans. Oh, so I tried to represent it through Europe because we, you know, there wasn't many. There's one, one from Australia here, but we'll get to that one later. But, but what, what I did was look at the, um, you know, vegans and, and are they getting enough essential amino acids? So I got two, a couple of studies on here. And the Danish one's very interesting because um, I'll just read the conclusion. Uh, many of the participants in this study failed to meet the daily protein intake requirements both single days and on all three days. So, you know, you're supposed to get amino acids a day. They said, okay, well, let, let's look at it over three days. And they, they, they sort of said, okay, well, let's just pull three days because that's how much your amino acid pulls mm-hmm. in the liver. And so what they did was they found that they were very deficient in a few amino acids, particularly lysine, leucine, and valine. Mm-hmm. Now, they're, they're, two of those are branch chains. Yeah. So great for growth. That's leucine and valine. Yeah. And lysine is, is very important too. So that they seem to be deficient in those three mm. on this group uh, based on this. So it doesn't mean every vegan's going to be deficient of those. That's what no. they're prone to yeah. being deficient in. So they, they found that, that even over three days there was a deficiency in those. And that's, that's a little bit of a problem. Um, so what they did, you know, there's 40, 40 of them there and, um, um, and they did a cross-sectional study, which is what you do for this type of thing. And they, they measured, they just said, eat away and they analyzed exactly what they ate. Yeah. So it is, it's, it's, it's okay to be deficient in protein for a day or two, mm. but three days is problematic. So with vegans, we've got to be a little bit careful of those, particularly those three essential amino acids. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So, so yeah. That, that, that was, I found that pretty interesting. So, yeah, interesting. And, and, and I've got a little bit of info on leucine and, light and, yeah, and, yeah, and how yeah. we can sort of t- go through that. Um, sure. We'll go th- we can go through the RDIs and things yeah. like that. Well, um, well, well yeah, you, really you mentioned RDIs, which is recommended daily intake. What, what, yeah. are, uh, uh, what, what are the RDIs for protein? So the RDI for, for protein in US and Australia, it's pretty much, it, it is the same. Mm. It's 0.8 grams per kilo of wow. body weight. 
Yeah. So, but what we have to remember is that an RDI is the minimal yeah. amount to maintain health, mm. not the optimal no. amount to maintain health. So 0.8, I think, is very low. Yeah. Um, I, I usually, and I think we, we spoke about this, yeah. said we both are on the side of higher yes. for protein intake. Mm-hmm. And then there are populations that will need more protein than others, and we can talk about those populations as well. Oh, it's all And sorts. how that changes throughout your life as well. You, you know, some people might think you might need less protein as you get older, but you actually need a lot more. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So we have a, I have a couple of little charts here. Um, yeah, and they're, they're fascinating. Run, run through them for me. Like, these are what, what you need for protein Yeah, per so day. these are optimal daily protein intakes yeah. in, for different populations. So, okay. so this one is an optimal – these are optimal daily protein intakes for healthy <laughs> – we laughed about this. Sedentary adults. Yeah, we said. Oh, we are, all right, I'll, so I'll basically, disclose. I guess you could say someone that works in an office that doesn't do much exercise and sits all day. Like working, us. Like us. But we exercise, Steve. I did. I went to the gym this morning. Yeah. But, but it's funny because right, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I said. I said, why is there such a thing as a healthy sedentary person? Because they wouldn't be it healthy wouldn't be healthy. sedentary. That's so anyway, so I'll get that off my chest. Yes, I'll get some so. emails about that, but that's all right. Yeah. But, but I think we shouldn't be sedentary. We're at 200-odd muscles. What, what are they for, sitting on the couch? Yeah, that's right. I mean, anyway. I could classify my, my career as sedentary because I do sit in front of a screen all day talking to clients. Yeah, I know. That's why I have a treadmill, which I jump up and I get up every hour and jump on the treadmill. And you do it every hour? Yeah, I do it every hour now. I've changed it, yeah, because I sit so much. I train in the morning and then I'll do an hour's work and then I'll jump up on the treadmill for 20 minutes and then I'll go back to work and if I see a client, after my client, I'll jump on it for another 20 minutes. Because so. people don't know, but you're still in practice, you know, in the cold brown that tropic, if you Google that, you're actually a practicing naturopath. I am. So and it's... so I guess during... You know, because you do it over Zoom, you can mm. be anywhere in the, in the country. Mm. I guess you, you could look great from here up and then you could just give your runners <laughs> on and whatever yeah. leggings and you could do your run between. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. 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 And let's say I don't run every time I jump on the treadmill, but I do I do um, walk if I don't, if I'm not doing a little bit of a run. It's also good because you can't, you know, sitting is the new smoking. Uh, and also, you know, structurally you have to get up and move. Yeah. So I do that. And after each meal, I also um, do a, a brisk walk because that helps with um, blood sugar balance. So. It does. But, um, but anyway, like, that's just that's just me. It's, it's but, um, remarkable. Okay, so, so these, these healthy sedentary adults. Yeah. So we'll go with, say, let's look at, say, the average female, the average male weight yep. would roughly be around, say, the average female would be, Look, I'm going to say 57. Let's go 57 kilos. Okay. Could be up to whatever, but 57 kilos. So the lower minimal, like lower end of protein intake would be 68 grams yep. per day, which I think is quite low. Yeah. And then the high end would be 102 grams per it's day, which I think is not that much. No. Um, and these are obviously relative to your body weight. So say then you're looking at a 68 kilo woman. Mm-hmm. Um, so the lower end would be 82, the higher end 122 grams of protein. Yeah. So that would be, and we'll talk about how, you, at the end, we'll talk about how to get in this amount of protein throughout mm-hmm. the day, because some people might struggle with that. So I think that that's a pretty, pretty okay, sort of the higher end is probably where I would be sitting, yeah. where I'd be recommending. Just people think of steak, and steak is about 20% protein. So yeah. if you eat a half a kilogram of steak mm. throughout the whole day, yeah. and I'm, I'm oversimplifying this, yeah. then that would give you about 122 grams of protein. Yeah, exactly. So lean steak, yeah. half a kilo. God, I eat, I eat that for dinner sometimes. Oh, see, I couldn't do half a kilo. Oh, I do. <laughs> Easy. I can't. I, I've had a kilo steak before. Have you? Oh, God, did you get equipment. the meat sweats and the... <laughs> no, I felt did it? fine. I, um, it's, it's actually thank, thanks to my mother-in-law once we went out for dinner and um, we both got this half kilo rums and then she sort of, you know, didn't eat it and gave it to me so I had a kilo of steak down. Oh and goodness. I didn't feel that like I, I, I must have some sort of ability to eat oh, you must have. steak because I didn't feel anything like I wasn't – I was full but I yeah. wasn't bloated or anything. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. Yeah, I, I, so I was I impressed. usually maybe 150 grams. <laughs> Um, 150 grams at a oh, sitting, I would pathetic. eat something like that. Mate, that's put, like put my, my iPhone, <laughs> my iPhone, Oppo phone. That's like. one meal though. So that would be around about, um, I think it'd probably be something around about um, 30, 40, maybe 40-ish grams, yeah. something like that. So that puts it into perspective. Hmm. Um, so then optimal daily protein intake for athletes. Yes, that's, that's it, that's me. So let's say a, a 68 kilo f- athlete female yep. probably more likely um mm. and some men as well so the lower end would be 95 pathetic yeah <laughs> and the higher end 136 better 
better yeah and say for a male who's maybe 90 kilos yeah um you'd be looking at minimal 127 yep and and up the higher end 181 grams yeah per I, kilo. I, I like the higher end because yeah. um you know and, and so, so roughly you double it you double yeah. your you double your weight in kilograms and turn it into grams yeah so if i'm 100 kilos i'd eat 200 grams of protein a day yeah and that's for a, a, an athletic person yeah. and that's yeah. about right i mean you know yeah. unless you, you're trying to build which is um what a lot of people are listening to and uh you know like what, what did ronnie coleman have when he was building his plan? <laughs> a comical amount a comical of amount. <laughs> per day yeah, what is a comical i amount? don't know like, like oh, let's say a scoop of here would add whey protein yeah. scoops are about 30 grams like what's mm. a comical amount of that five scoops no, is just, that comical i was just thinking of the reel you sent me the other day about the protein <laughs> Oh, that? right. <laughs> and the guy was like, just add a co- – oh, anyway, it was on Instagram. Add a Fruit. scoop of protein and then you add in, then you add it. And by the end of it, you added like 30 scoops of protein. Yeah. protein. And then right at the end of the mix, he goes, now, when I was – when you weren't looking I at it. I put in some more protein, protein, yeah. And then he tasted it and he goes, just needs a little bit more protein. protein. <laughs> you put some more in. <laughs> I know. These are the things we do. That, that, that's yeah. a Ronnie Con- – yeah, that's all. We, we, we send weird <laughs> shit to each other. But, 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 you know, he would have had let, – let's say it was five scoops of 30 grams of protein. And that's probably conservative for him mm. that's 150 grams of protein mm. in a supplement form forget his meals he used to have yeah. seven eight so so these bulkers can really you know go nuts with the protein mm. and, and all right that's excessive but it let's, it's, it's excessive, excessive. Yeah. but but you know it's it and, and there's a lot of questions about excessive protein and what does it do like i, I in my day protein was considered something you didn't want to have too much of because it harms your kidneys halves yeah. your bones mm. uh, and and luckily there's been studies on that now about you know if you have a lot of protein what does it do to your bones and that sort of thing mm. and so i've got a study here one of the many i'll get rid of off the table <laughs> take one of them away yeah phew. um this is a, a journal of cachexia so sarcopenia and muscle i'd never heard of that journal mm. 2023 journal and what they did was they they, they picked on um older people here and they said, okay, they, they did a longitudinal study, which means you, you look at them over a, a long period of time, and they, they just say, eat what you want, mm-hmm. and they, they broke them up into quarters, okay? And, they, and what they see is the first quarter has low protein, mm-hmm. second, third, higher, higher, and the fourth quarter had the most protein mm-hmm. naturally in their diets. They weren't supplemented, they just watched them. And they found the people that had the higher protein levels, like the highest, had the best bones. Mm-hmm. And so it was quite linear. And quite, um, you know, you, you look at the data and it's quite equivocal that that's, um, that that's what you found. So the more protein they had, the better their bones were as they age. Oh, so yeah. you said it earlier that, that as you age, you, you, you may want to, you know, have more Chris. protein. Yeah, well, there you go. That's so, so what they found, and I'll just read the conclusion, an association between uh, total and animal protein intake with higher bone mineral density was found. Now... Animal protein in the old days when I studied was, was bad for your bones. It mm. used to leach calcium out, and it doesn't, yeah. of course, because these no. are old people which is going to leach if it's going to leach. That's right. And they had an association, which means positive, not an inverse. Mm. So it means positive. So the more protein they had, whether animal or vegetable, the more their bones got. Bones, bones are made of protein as well. That's right. And collagen yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. Balance everything. Extremes in any direction is not good Mm. so an extreme you know meat diet an extreme plant-based diet either end of the scale is going to be bad we just want good balance all across the board i agree no matter what you do and we know humans are quite dynamic with with what they can eat we look at the inuits um and during winter they eat pretty much 100 percent animal foods yeah because they have to and they survive reproduce and you know go on with life yeah. and then we've got people in the amazon that eat largely vegetarian with when they can come across a well, sort of thing other when they killed a monkey and ate it but you know they yeah i know it's not what i would have done but they 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 and usually they didn't because they're little little buggers escape you know but they <laughs> the they, they get them eventually <laughs> oh, okay on. oh no it's pretty great it was it's pretty worse it was pretty um you oh, know you they, all the vegans out there it was a, it was a chimpanzee too and they're our cousins oh, you know it's <laughs> yes. like it was pretty bad i didn't kill it but they did and no. that's what they do but I mean, normally guess... they would have a vegetarian style diet yeah they catch eat piranhas too in this particular so, eat piranhas as well yeah oh, gee. yeah and they could but but they were largely vegetarian, so and they were thriving and surviving. Um, you know they had bigger problems to worry about, and the yeah. bush and that. You know with snakes and spiders and all the other crap used to get them. Mm. But 
So, so humans are quite dynamic. With very what adaptable. We, very. That's why we are. Mm. I say the number one species. It sounds egotistical, but that's why we can survive in extremes around the world. Yeah. From the equator to the poles. Yeah. We're there, and we 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 do all right now. Nowadays, we've got modern things, which means we can move food around, and we can. But but from a protein point of view, um, you know, we we still need essential amino acids, we now, do. whether they're vegan from sources or whatever. But mm. typically, in in the Caucasian sort of European, we can lack amino acids and certain vitamins. Not part of the thing, but B twelve is a is is a classic yeah. one. But yeah, so so humans are quite dynamic, and and we started eating meat about uh, uh, about a million years ago mm. when we started really hunting and gathering. Yes. So we've been eating meat for a long period of time. Yeah. Um. So um. But but even you know before that, in monkeys nowadays still uh, are my, my, sometimes carnivorous. Mm. When they when they can, but you know it's it's we have got three different sets of teeth in our head. We've got eyes at the front of our head, so we're predatory, yes, yeah. and we've got a digestive system which sets up things. And we we, we have an essential thing in our body called cholesterol. Yep. If we don't eat it, we make it. Yeah. Um. So um. And and that's another kettle of fish. So meat is um not a no no. Mm. Um. We can certainly argue about the the processing of meat and the the you know the the nitrates in things and the yeah. preservatives and that quality and the ex- of the, the, the meat's a whole nother a whole nother episode, isn't it? We're talking about just basic unprocessed, yep. you know, the best quality meat. And also, let's just premise: this podcast isn't either um, a meat camp or kind of you know, no. a, or a plant based camp. We're not saying one's better than the other. No. We're just laying out all the the evidence. And how, if you are one or the other, how to maintain a good um, protein intake, a balanced intake for the best health, for your optimal Absolutely. health. So we, we don't have no no bias to either or. Infants can't be vegans though. No. Because they, they're taurine, they can't make taurine. Yeah. Until a certain age. I can't remember what that age is. But, so they can't be vegan. And usually not because they breastfeed. Well, I mean, there has been in the past, I think um, some stories came out with, you know, people putting their infants on plant-based oh soy yeah yeah and of course the, neurological the yeah. yeah um become malnourished and sometimes even died so yeah so definitely n- not for infants no yeah um yeah so so, we so that, now you are talking about protein levels and that yeah. sort of thing and and so so we've got to sort of look at look at look at you know what what you need and what you're doing in your life you know mm-hmm. And if you are sedentary, let's say you are sedentary, mm. our first advice would be to move, yeah. but let's say you don't, mm. um, you really don't need as much protein because protein, if you have an excessive amount, can undergo what they call gluconeogenesis, yeah. which can turn into sugars. That's interesting because, you know, I, I have seen clients in the past that still that are diabetic, a type 2 diabetic, so they've gone um, ketogenic, I'll say that in air quotes because maybe not in full ketogenic, or very low carbon, they're having their proteins and things like that. And their blood sugars have, uh, aren't improving. Yeah. And that's because they're having high amounts of protein. Mm. They're quite sedentary, as you said. Yeah. Um, so they're still getting that sugar. It's still t- converting to sugar through gluconeogenesis. So their blood sugars aren't improving. So mm. that's an in- important point to make. That is an important point. Yeah. And, you know, the, the classic ketogenic diet is, is a fairly low pr- protein yeah, diet. Yeah, everyone high protein. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. It's high fat. High fat diet, yeah, extraordinary, yeah, yeah, and and all these people, are, and we've done podcasts on on carnivorous diets, you know, yeah. purely carnivorous, mm. and all these people say you've got to exercise, got to exercise, got yeah. to exercise, and 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 this is where protein um, match up with this. So so if you're, you know, you you like us that do a bit of activity a day, probably, and remember, it's only a small percentage of our days. Like if we exercise yeah. for five percent of the day, mm. okay, that's a lot. Yeah, that's is. about an hour. Yeah, did you know that? It's a lot for a lot of people. Yeah, it's over I, an I hour. Do, I do now that that five percent of a day is, is, a, is an hour. It's an over hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, mean, I don't think an I think an hour is, you know, I would do an hour minimum. As you know, I would do an. I would say to someone, do an hour. Well, sorry, I would. I take that back. If someone is just starting out, I usually yeah. recommend twenty to thirty minutes. Mm. But once you're fit, I would say an hour definitely. Yeah. As you know, ideally, yes. and then you know a little bit, a little bit maybe more, depending on what you're doing, and then of course, but yeah, an hour isn't. I wouldn't consider it to be a lot. No, oh, but it's 5% of the day. Yeah. Like you think about it, 5% is 1 20th for those who are yeah. struggling with the maths. Now, 1 20th of 24 mm. is over one hour. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So, yeah. so you know, if you want to exercise for um, 3% of your day, mm. then that's over 30 minutes. Yeah. So, you know, it's about 40 minutes. Yeah. So, you know, when, when, when people say I've got no time to exercise, it's only 3% of your day. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, then you're going to have so much health and brilliant sleep better. You're going to, you know, we, we recorded a podcast yesterday, um, you know, on sleep and mm-hmm. exercise was great to help you sleep. Yeah. Um, so, so you will sleep more efficiently. Yeah. So you'll actually make up that 3% in no time. Yeah, exactly. And it's only 3%. Yeah. So, it's so the, these, um, the, these proteins, and you did mention kidneys before and I can, Talk yes. about kidneys. Yeah, because that's the other thing that people are concerned about is or kidney function if you have too much protein. Yeah, uh, and, and, and what they found here, it's sort of like, and it's like, and I was explaining it yesterday, this is from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. I'll summarise what it says, basically. Um, if you have um, um, kidney problems, then that's different. It's like if you had a broken, we had a staff member here whose child broke their wrist in two places. Yeah. I won't mention anything else. So... Their exercise is restricted on that wrist barrier because it'd be bad for them to exercise on that wrist. Yeah. Now, yesterday when his wrist wasn't broken, mm-hmm. it'd be good to exercise using your hands and yeah. doing whatever. Yeah. So, but so it depends on the individual. So you've got broken kidneys, mm. chronic kidney disease. You need less proteins. But what they found was that among participants with impaired kidney function, a higher uh, protein was associated with a higher mortality, whereas a lower protein was associated with higher mortality in those with normal kidney function. Mm. So the more protein you had, the less mortality you had. Yeah. Because it's essential. It it's not essential. like, oh, you should try and – it's it's essential. Yeah. And we didn't write the rules. No. The rules of the human body are imprinted in our genes, and we need these amino acids. Now, this is, this is a, a major study, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 2021. Um, basically, the, 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 the title says it all. It says dietary protein and kidney function and survival in a nationally representative cohort. So we've sort of confused the issue. Like, mm. if you've got a broken leg, don't do squats. Yeah. If you haven't got a broken leg and you've got a good back, and like, do squats are very good for you. That's right. So it depends. If you've got a broken kidney, don't eat as much protein. Yeah. But if you've got a healthy kidneys, the protein seems to reduce your mortality. That's right. Your death. Yeah, it's like so, anything, isn't it? Unless, of course, one you've got polycystic kidney disease, yep. where um, ketogenic diet has been shown to be very good. So again, really? not high protein, but still protein in yeah. there. So, but you exactly you're spot on. It's mm. if something's broken, then you don't do, do things that you would usually do to it if it wasn't broken. No, exactly right. So, um, and so, so it's very interesting. Um, yeah. I found a paper here that contradicts that other paper mm-hmm. that says you can get essential. And it's an Australian paper. Um, and, and this is a sample of, of the meal. Now, now tell me, you can, this is... Because I know who, what, who sponsored this paper. Yes, yes. We'll get to that in a sec. But have a listen to this meal and tell me if you see anything wrong with it. Okay. The first thing, first day is you have basically two whole grain wheat biscuits with four strawberries, a milk, a slice of multigrain toast, and an egg. Okay. <laughs> and for morning tea, you can have six apricot halves. Okay. For lunch, the pita bread with a falafel, chickpea falafel, and hummus. Okay, I'm just skipping through. The afternoon thing is you have a, a banana, and then for dinner, you have um, cook, one cup of cooked rice and some tofu and some vegetables. I mean, have a – and then you have chocolate as a snack. Oh, wow. As a, as a, as a, a, and I mean – how much carbohydrate yeah, is in not that? And that's what they recommend as a sample vegetarian meal plan designed to meet the protein macronutrients for a, for a 30 to 50 year old woman. Mm. Oh, uh, a 30 to 50 year old. So that's, yeah, that's, that's a they, very broad population as well. That that, that, that's what they pick. Now, that's to, to get protein, you have to eat all that sugar. Yeah. And carbohydrates, There's which turn into sugar. In it's like flour or grains three times a day. Yeah. And then you got your, your apricots and you got your banana, which is, you know, lots of sugar. And then you got your one cup of, of low-fat soy milk and um, chocolate powder. Mm-hmm. And it's like – and not, not collagen chocolate. This is like chocolate 10 grams chocolate. of chocolate that's got 1.3 grams of protein. Wow. And okay. it's like, come on, guys. Yeah, that's, that's a, yeah. I mean, look, you have got some plant-based – obviously, you've got your chickpeas in there. Yeah. You've got your tofu. So that's all fine. Yeah. But those those carbohydrate, that carbohydrate content for the for the average person yeah. is very high. Very but, high. I mean, who, who was um, – Oh, yeah. <laughs> so sanitarian health. Or should we, should we not say that? I don't know. Can we say that? 
Okay, so this paper um, is in our references. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm a fan of that because I think that's way too many sugars and carbohydrates yeah. for the diet. But the, the, it is a, a, a journal um, written in Australia um, done by um, professional dietetics. Mm. And, I mean, that's a little bit – because if you recommended that to someone in your, in your clinic, let's say you've got a 30 to 50-year-old woman mm. and you give them that, that diet – you know, they're, they're sure oh, that's a bit, disastrous. It, it, disastrous. Unless is they're a high-performing athlete that can tolerate that many carbohydrates, and even then, not, not great. But um, but yeah. So you can look up the paper and who um, who was sponsoring it because the company <laughs> sponsoring it does is involved in involved and, um, in yeah yeah uh, grain type products. Correct. So, so don't believe everything. I so, mean, that that's called critical thinking. Yeah, I'll get rid of that yeah, one. Yeah, get rid of that one too. Um, that, that's critical thinking and, and, and you've got to be a little bit careful of that because th- this is this is an Australian paper. And look, that, that used to kind of be the standard proce- standard sort of practice when you pr- with diets back, mm. you know, 20 years ago, cereal for breakfast, you know, with a bit of protein, high protein cereal and then yeah. the sandwich you wrap for lunch and then yeah. your, your carbs for dinner. That used to be standard and we know a lot better now. We do. Yeah. So, so it's sort of like it, it's very interesting that they. That, that, and, and by the way, if you quickly look at that, there's very little methionine in that, very in that little. diet and yeah. branch chains, amino acids, yeah. which are this branch chain amino acids, isoleucine, leucine, valine. They're, yeah. they're amino acids that are essential. Yeah. Um, and they're also branch chains. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not going not to be good for athletes that one either. So it's, it's a little, a little bit scary. Athlete. Yeah, it is. So, um, so yeah. So we went through a couple of just examples of yep. you know what would be optimal, mm-hmm. um, and then it changes if you obviously obviously if you're an athlete, if you're trying to gain muscle, if you're trying to lose fat, it mm-hmm. would change a little bit. But I but the RDI well, the optimal ranges are still a lot higher than the RDI. Mm. So um, that's and we, we would as I said at the end we can talk about what a day would look like to get your um, protein adequacy in there yeah, we'll give them some protein levels even should i say absolutely some diet ideas yeah now now what are what are anti so yeah so I put there's this, in. this it, it's like it's like in in science we talk about matter and we talk about antimatter yeah and in in like, like people say how does something come from nothing in, yeah. in, in, it's a big big question in science yeah well if you had if you had a a, a vacuum of space right mm. and you took every molecule out of it and it just was a space mm. then matter would be created because you'd get matter and antimatter being created and then destroying each other again and that's mm. what happens in quantum physics yeah. and we know this we can observe this we can measure this mm. so matter is is made and destroyed now in in protein you can eat protein but it can be taken out, mm. can't it, yeah, by, it can. by antimatter or by anti, anti, anti-protein. Anti What's all that about? So I put this in there. So it sounds like we might be picking on people who are plant, following plant-based diets <laughs> or we vegans. Go. We're actually not. So what, the reason no. I put this in there is so that we can make sure that people following these plant-based diets are getting the, the right um, yeah. Amino acid profiles in there so they can have optimal health on a plant-based diet. And, mm. and I see a lot of people on vegan diets who really aren't sure about what to have. And so their, their diets are suboptimal mm-hmm. and therefore that's creating health issues for yep. them. So so the reason we explain all this is so that we can people can sort of um, work on improving the, the balance of their diet. Um, so, yeah, so there's something called protein quality. Yeah. Um, so protein quality um, is de- de- uh, determined by the bioavailability of the amino acid profile. Right. right? Okay. So bioavailability. Mm-hmm. So plant proteins have a much lower bioavailability because they do have these anti-nutrients. So trypsin in, uh, uh, tryptin inhibitors, uh, phytates, tannins, um, and other anti-nutrients. And and I know this is all across being social, being across social media too. Anti-nutrients and veg, vegetables are going to kill you. And you know, told the, you they were going to kill you. They're going to kill you. And that's not that's not true. And that's no. not what we're saying. But you've got to remember that plants have to have defence mechanisms against things that are going to eat them. Absolutely. So these are their defence mechanisms. So when we eat them, they can you know impact our health if we don't sort of destroy some of these anti-nutrients, and so we can absorb. Um, the the amino acids from them. So the good news is a lot of it can be cooked out mm-hmm. if you cook them. Mm-hmm. So that will reduce these these um, anti nutrients. Mm-hmm. Um, but some of them can't. Um, so that will impact their bio bioavail- bioavailability mm-hmm. uh, and digestibility. Um, so so that's one thing. So you can cook them out. So and then the other thing is um, the amino acid profile. Oh yeah, what's that? So protein. 
Um, so obviously, as we said, most proteins are made from 20 amino acids, yeah, right? Okay. So the body can produce 11 of them and we need nine from the diet. Mm-hmm. Um, so the nine are obviously are the essential amino acids. So muscle building, um, pro- uh, so protein synthesis, mm-hmm. um, building muscle requires that <laughs> protein muscle synthesis exceeds pro- protein muscle breakdown, right? right? Which makes sense. Yes. Right? Um, so that uh, so that re- results in a net accumulation of muscle protein. Mm-hmm. So all twenty amino acids are required yeah. um, to build muscle tissue, but protein muscle synthesis is stimulated primarily by essential amino acids yes. in your food. Yep. And plant proteins are lower in essential amino acids, as we just said. Facts, yeah. So therefore, they have um, a higher. Um, they're higher in non-essential amino acids, which means that protein synthesis is a little bit can be a little bit lower than with animal proteins. Mm-hmm. If that made sense, yeah, it does make sense. We have got some, and we can put the the link charts to this, here. Yeah, this is this great study. Um, some charts, yeah, and Matt can put them up. Um, of and they basically just show the so the first one is the bioavailability of plant-based versus um, animal proteins. Yep. So, Which is higher generally. Well, the animal proteins yeah. generally are higher. Um, and then the amino acid pro- uh, pro- um, profile as well. Of, That's a of good plants. one. Yeah, That's this a... one, is, you can actually see quite a difference Ooh, in the amino yeah. acid pro- protein. Um, oh, my goodness. Amino acid profile yep. of animal-based proteins compared to plant-based proteins. Animal-based proteins, quite a lot higher. Like, like though, just picking on wheat, um, wheat proteins, yeah. it's got less than 30%. Yeah. And then you've got like whey, which is above 50%. So it's almost doubly as good with the essentials and that yeah. sort of thing. So, so it's quite remarkable. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, and, and, you know, there's nothing, as I said, nothing wrong with eating, well, wheat proteins, things like gluten, which are problems in themselves. Well, I mean, I'm not, um, podcasts on them. We're, we're, not, anyway, but yeah. we're, we're not fans of that. But, but hemp, for example, that, that's just up above 30 um, in the big scale, about 34% by yeah. looking at the chart. So. Yeah, and hemp, yeah, hemp's a good, a good product. Oh, yeah, protein. It's, and there's nothing wrong with eating these things. It's just to be aware that these aren't going to be. Now, when we say quality, it doesn't mean it's, it's a bad thing. It just means no. that it's not as high with the essential amino acids. It just acids. means you have to work harder to get your diet balanced than yeah. if you, and have to think a little bit more than if yeah. you were just eating a piece of meat and not worrying about it because it's exactly. got all the essential amino acids in it. Mm. So plant proteins are particularly um, are low in leucine. Yeah, that's so, the... And this amino acid is super important, as we've talked about before, um, is it sort of signals, uh, it's basically a signal to turn on the anabolic signaling pathways. Yes. So which improves um, muscle protein synthesis. Even though all the essential amino acids are needed for that, leucine mm-hmm. is, is very important. On. So um, leucine content of um, plant foods is lower. They are. Primarily than yeah. animal proteins. Um, so, and that's super important. So leucine is super important. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do we fix this yeah. for somebody that's on a plant-based diet? Well, that's a million dollar question. How do we fix someone's on a plant-based diet? What do we do? So, I mean, we've heard of food combining, as we said, so plant, you know, combining, um, grains and legumes mm-hmm. to create, to create complete proteins, um, so I have an example here, Steve. Oh, yeah, go for it. So I'm going to read this. So cereal grains, so wheat and rice are low in lysine, mm-hmm. and nuts and seeds are also low in lysine yep. primarily. Beans and legumes are low in methionine and cysteine. Yeah. Pea and soy have a lots of lysine. Yes. Uh, and rice has lots of methionine mm-hmm. um, and cysteine. And um, corn has lots of leucine. It has loads of leucine. I was surprised. So... What you can do is you can start to pair some of these together yeah. to create a proper, a good amino acid profile. Yeah. And that's where that food combining comes in. And it, it is a little bit different than it used to be. You don't have to have, you know, a, say a grain and a legume with each meal. Yeah, that's right. Now. As long as you get getting them all in there somewhere throughout the day, yeah. then that's the main thing. That's it. But you have to really be all over this if you're on a plant-based diet and you want to have optimal health. Yeah. So you need to really look at how, to, which um, which grains and which legumes and things you should you should be having in your diet to get that um, good amino acid profile. Okay, Craig, absolutely, R- really important information for, for vegans out there. Because yeah. if let's face it, if, if you're having an omniv- omnivorous diet, eating meat once or twice a day, when I say meat, it could be fish, chicken, whatever, turkey. Yeah. You're basically going to get all your essentials. Well, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. 
And that's, I think, the difference. So, you yeah. know, um, you just have to think it about it a little bit more. And there's nothing, as I said, there's nothing wrong with being plant-based if you want to nope. be plant-based. But really do your research or see somebody who can design a, a, a balanced diet so you're going to get these full amino acid profiles to, to help um, your overall health. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and you mentioned something about, you know, leucine and, and growth and all that sort of thing. And Because there are proteins that talk to genes and enzymes in your body because a lot of people are listening to this wanting protein to build muscle. Yeah. So there are lots of genes in your body that are switched on by certain proteins. Mm. So there's a great paper here in the frontiers of, of physiology, which is so biochemical. It's 2022. Uh, it's called supplementation of specific collagen peptides following high load resistance exercise upregulates gene expression in pathways involved in skeletal muscle growth. Mm. Hey, can you believe that? No. It tells it's really... so it's specific collagen peptides. Yeah talks to the genes of the body and tells the genes to switch on muscle growth. Mm, Isn't that remarkable? It is remarkable. It's amazing. I mean, I'm going to hold this up to the camera of, of the biochemical pathways. Um, <laughs> this is one of them. We won't look go at, through Look the at whole that. Pathway. That's absolutely nuts. <laughs> that's one pathway and that's another pathway. And then you've got a similar one like this. So, so this pathway will start with his mTOR, mm. mammalian target of raptomycin we copies. we talked about quite a bit yeah. before. Yeah, and so, so when you ingest collagen... It tells the body to upregulate mTOR, which stimulates muscle growth. Yeah. And that's what some proteins like this one. I love this protein. Mm. This is um, a body balance protein, it's called. And this actually switches on this enzyme to grow muscles, as well as it has the amino acids to do it, but the actual protein switches it on too. Yeah. And that's one of the three muscle growth pathways. Most people know that now, and they take branch chains for that. And mm. I'm drinking that now. Not that I need bigger muscles. Jesus, no, they're huge. They might pull them back a bit. If they're I massive. I can barely get, get the, the door. Just, just huge, you know. <laughs> that's right. All the girls are chatting me up at the gym all the time. It's disgraceful. <laughs> you know, yes. Nick can't keep her eyes off my arms. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say that was straight face. That's just not true. Oh, Beck's all over me at night. She's, oh, God, you're muscly every night. She says that to me. No, she doesn't at all, ever. So, so there, there is another pathway. So that's the mTOR one that everyone knows about. Yeah. There's phosphonostide 3 kinase pathway for yeah. muscle growth, and collagen does that as well, and it stimulates it and, and tells, it, again, that pathway to build muscle. And, and in this particular study, there's one more pathway because the AMK pathway, yeah, adenosine that. monophosphate kinase pathway, and that again tells it to. So, so you've got to remember, all proteins are not created equal. No. This, if you want the muscle growth, because I believe a lot of people are listening to us want more muscle yeah. growth, then then this is a good protein to ingest to grow muscles mm -hmm. beyond the amino acid complex. There's good amino acids in there as well um, because, you know, you've got collagen in your muscles. Yep. You haven't got any whey in your muscles. No. You know, it's collagen. Mm -hmm. So this is collagen. Mm -hmm. So it has those sorts of things. also good for your gut and all that other crap that we've talked about yeah. before. Hair, skin, nails as well. Hair, skin, nails. And, and, and I love this because they, they compared it to a placebo after exercise and I'll just show you the, the graph of these enzymes upregulated. Because you exercise, you get upregulation. But when you add collagen to it, you get this super physiological response of upregulation compared to a placebo. Yeah. So it, it really does grow those, those enzymes. So I like um, these sort of things if you're interested in growing muscle. Yeah. So, you know, I, I like collagen for all sorts of reasons, but that's another reason to love collagen because of the pathways. I love it. It's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's great. It's amazing, isn't it? So, Nick, you're, you're, yeah. in, you're in practice. Let's say you've got someone in front of you, and, and, and I actually, T, uh, well, a staff member here asked me a question yesterday because a vegan wrote in saying that she was uh, lacking essentially on, on, on um, she's taking one of our products. But anyway, so, so she was on a, a very low protein diet and was diagnosed as being malnourished. Mm. So let's say you're, you're trying to give someone a meal in your clinic uh, a daily plan, just give some suggestions mm. that you would give this person to get their protein essentials, all the protein levels up to scratch. What sort of meals would they be eating? So I generally, what I say is a base before we even look at primary, uh, like a specific amounts of protein. Mm -hmm. I just say as a ball, as a base, mm -hmm. 30 grams of protein per meal. Mm. For a, for a female, yep, a little bit more for a male. Yep. Um, so thirty grams at breakfast, thirty grams at lunch, thirty grams at dinner, and mm -hmm. that's just a good start. You yep. don't have to think too much about it. So that could be something like, um, you know, three eggs for breakfast, or you could have two eggs and a couple of egg whites. 
if oh, you don't yeah. want to do the full yolks. Some yeah. people do, some people don't. Um, and this is a, something that people balk a little bit about, and I've just started doing this and I'm, I'm still getting used to it, but meat for breakfast. <laughs> I'm starting to do meat because I, I, I need to increase my protein a little bit at breakfast because, um, um, you know, different stages of your life, you need mm. to change things around based on what's happening and hormonally. And you're at 27, 28. So. Yeah, I'm 28, so I'm sort of mid, <laughs> mid on my, no, um, I'm in the next phase. So, so but our blood sugar levels are, then become a factor. So you want to be balanced, and we can talk about what protein helps with that sort of thing as well. Um, but having good sources of protein um, for breakfast. So a lot of people may have a smoothie, something like that, and that's fine. And if you mm. want to put your protein in there, I do. I put my collagen in my collagen protein in my smoothie. But I find that my blood sugar spikes a bit too much mm. from that. So I need something a little bit more substantial. So, But meat can be a good breakfast mm. for some people. So, sure. um, you know, you could do like a savoury mince. You could do whatever you've had for dinner the night before. You can have some of that for breakfast. Sure. Plant, plant breakfast, you mentioned a smoothie. I, I know people put like brown rice in, in smoothie. Yeah. Now, now, I'm not a... You know, it, it can be problematic, but these are the sorts of ways you can get protein up or you can have like a, a fried piece of tofu or whatever you want for breakfast like that yeah. if you're a vegan and you want to focus on protein. Or you could have a low-protein breakfast or, you know, I've seen people have Greek yogurt if they're veg- not veg- yeah. vegan, but they're vegetarian. Yeah. And, and they, they may want to eat eggs as well. So, yeah, um, so you can, can certainly do it. You can do it. And, I, and that's one thing to promise if you're having a plant-based protein. Mm. Um, look for one that's pea and a rice mix. Yeah. Because that gives you the full amino acid profile, yeah, that, like you said, with the point. combining. Yeah. yeah. So you can do that. Um, so, yeah, and then lunch and lunch and dinner, I usually say, fairly similar. So some sort of um, proteins, whether that be chicken, meat, fish, tofu, mm-hmm. um, tempeh, you know, if you have a mm. plant-based, that sort of thing, or you, your combination of your grain and your legume, uh, and some vegetables. Yeah. And then obviously put your carbohydrates in to match what – for your needs Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the same for dinner so but you base and we've talked about this before you base your meal around your protein Mm. so your protein is the most important Mm -hmm. so minimum 30 grams and then you can work out optimal for you for your own needs goals weight all that sort of thing um, each meal so I find that that's super easy to get your head around and if you're plant-based and you work out what it is that you need to combine so you make sure you're getting that in there Mm. throughout the day that's a really good starting point and then, you know, you can work on your, basically your protein intake needs based on your goals, mm-hmm. whether you want to build muscle, whether mm-hmm. you want to lose weight, maintain that type of thing. And then you build it around that. So, and then you can have your snacks in there as well. So you can do Which boiled can egg. Based. Can, yeah, protein based. You can do, you know, a little tin of tuna. You can do a handful of nuts, which are, have protein in them as well. They're not I just do. fats. Yeah. So it's actually not that hard to get a baseline for that sort of thing. So and we haven't even mentioned supplementation. No, we haven't. You know, we, we haven't mentioned that you can just have a shake of some description. Because, you know, especially in the afternoon, you, you, you sort of peckish some people. Yeah. And you, and you just, you know, you, you want to eat something. And let's say it's something sweet. You know, mm. you get that sweet craving. Mm. Proteins are sweet because yeah. they're, they're sweetened. Yeah. Don't get the ones with sucralose or a yeah, sulfamide potassium. Yeah, the artificial sweeteners and the awful Gee, I, I saw a protein yesterday that's very popular. I won't mention its brand name. But it's got color 102 in it, which oh. is tartrazine. Oh, no, that's not good. And it's sweetened with a sulfur mine K and sucralose. Oh, goodness. And it's a very popular whey protein on the market. Okay. I couldn't believe tartrazine. That yeah, freaked no, me out. No, a I bit. can't believe they're still putting tartrazine in anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. It's in twisties or whatever. You know, they got all the. Because it's a junk food. But mm. proteins, you just yeah. be careful about yeah. that. And, no. you know, this is a, 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 a. Not. This is a, a whey protein. It's. Mm. I would have to say one of the most popular whey proteins on the market. I won't mention the name of it, but it's mm. on the label. Mm. It's not I'm making yeah. up a conspiracy thing. It's literally yeah. on the label. Yeah. So oh. be careful of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And if you're making a protein shake, yep. it, again, depending on your needs, post-workout, things like that. But a lot of people will put a shake. They'll put lots of fruits and things in them. Mm. And then they become quite... Um, high in carbohydrates mm. and simple carbohydrates so you just be, be careful about when you're having what protein shake for what if it's yeah. post-workout yes high higher sugar is fine um you know if you're just having it as a snack make sure it's a little bit lower in sugar make yeah. sure you've got your protein in there so but um but yeah so that's a that's a super easy way to start to get your protein needs met mm-hmm. um I have got a little saying, and it's it's not my saying. I've heard it, but I love it. Claim it, it, Nick. Say it's yours. (laughs) Lie. So you know the saying, you are what you eat? Yes. It shouldn't really be you are what you eat. It should be you are what you digest. 
Oh, yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. So yeah. when we're talking about protein and any sort of nutrient that we need to get, we need to absorb, we need to first be able to digest it mm. to be able to absorb it. And so you want to have, and particularly if you're not plant-based, if you're eating animal-based proteins, can be a little bit harder to break down than, than vegetables and things in some cases, although mm. legumes can be a little bit difficult as well. Um, you want to have good amounts of acids and enzyme production to digest it. That's true. So, you know, if you're a little bit protein deficient and you're eating protein, mm. maybe look at are you actually digesting well? Because if you're not, you're going to, not going to be able to break down those protein structures to absorb the amino acids. It's a good point. So that's a really important thing for people to remember. And we've gone through this in so many other podcasts, you know, um, apple cider vinegar can be a good start. You mm. can do hydrochloric acid if you need to, you know, pr- um, and then your digestive enzymes is another part of it. And then stress management around eating. So all of those things have to be part of a healthy diet mm. because there's no point having a healthy diet if you can't digest it and absorb it. That's a great point. So I just wanted to put that in there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, some of the populations that we that really need to be very mindful of their protein intake. So obviously plant-based, we've, we've, we've said that. Um, older older populations, yep. as we said in the beginning. So a few different reasons why as you get older you need more protein. Mm. One, particularly older people, they do eat less protein because, one, it's harder to digest. It's, it's in their stomach, that type mm. of thing. And that's because as we get older our stomach acid reduces, mm. so therefore it's harder to, to digest these things. So we need to work on um, digestive function for older people and then increase their protein. So, you know, when we were talking about say average around two grams to protein sure. per person, yep. you're looking at up to even four as wow. you're getting older. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that people don't really think about. Um, and then postmenopausal women, this is another one. And I see this all the time in clinic. They're eating one. They're not, they're eating very low amounts because they have weight problems. They do. They yeah. tend to put on weight. They tend to put on weight. And that's because they lose those female sex hormones. They get imbalances. The um, blood sugar imbalances become quite significant. Mm-hmm. Um, stress hormones, that sort of thing are mm-hmm. a lot more, it's a lot more unbalanced. So they're putting on weight. So they're eating less and less and they're eating less protein as well, whereas they actually need to eat a lot more protein because we also lose muscle at a much faster rate postmenopausally because estrogen is anabolic, hmm. so we're losing the estrogen. So um, so protein levels need to go up postmenopausally as well, which a lot of women don't really think about. Sorry, right. guys, but I had to put that in there as well. Yeah, um, so that's really important So to make sure that the, their protein needs are met and that's something a lot of people aren't doing in those populations. And also... Um, younger women, possibly, who are watching their weight that are under eating, then they yeah. then they um, they can become malnourished, as you said, yeah. and then also people who are unwell. So, and I see this a lot too: thyroid conditions. Yeah. People really need to nourish their body because the thyroid is a protein protein structure is, as yeah. well. Mm. You need to nourish your body, have a good amount of proteins in your diet. When you're recovering from injury, uh, recovering from illness, if you have thyroid conditions, that type of thing, you need to have good levels of protein. So that's that's something to remember for those populations as well. Super important. Wow. Outside of yeah, athletes could, and that sort of yeah, because we only think of the the, the body builds and that. Thing. Yeah. And and and, and the, a trick. Look, this is where supplements can be useful. Let, let's say you're old and you don't mm-hmm. feel like. Um, you know, having proteins and and full disclosure, we're ATP Science. We sell protein. We're food first. We're naturopaths. We're always, but but as a supplement, you can yeah. just drink some of this stuff mm. and just goes down easily and it tastes good. It's got benefits, yeah. but but it's it's all natural. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to flog protein powders here, but but mm. you know, I'd rather be food first. But for people who can't, this is when you can supplement. Well, that's it, and that's where supplements really play their part you know like you said some people just can't do the food or you know some people just can't they can't uh, consume that amount of protein if they're not used to it in one hit so Mm. that's where um, protein powders can be really beneficial to sort of slot in where they can still get their protein intake Um, as you said it's all pre-digested so Mm. it's very easily absorbed yeah so, um, so yeah, they they definitely can be really useful. <laughs> it reminds me of Ronnie Coleman. I saw an interview with him where he was struggling to get his six to eight hundred <laughs> grams of protein a day. Oh my god! <laughs> so, so he said that's where he, he had to drink all the protein powders, and you go through a tub or two every sort of week or so. You know, yeah. extraordinarily amounts of these large things because yeah. you know. And, and but but I mean, you know, we were not talking that that that's excessive, but but just to 
just, just one drink a day. Mm. And it's really, yeah. it's not that expensive. You could blend it with some berries if you want some, you know, or yeah, something like that. So it's really lots of tricks there, but that that's great. That's a really good good suggestion about how to get more protein in these days. And if, if you're pregnant. Um, yes, I didn't put the pregnancy one in there so ah, pregnant ladies because I don't treat pregnant people. So yeah, <laughs> it's cruel. Isn't that terrible? Don't worry but about it. But their them. protein is definitely increased. Yeah, there well, they're as growing well. another human and, body. Yeah, exactly. And and also breastfeeding during breastfeeding, obviously, mm. needs increase. Anything that is going to deplete your body, mm-hmm. you need to increase your protein. So whether that be pregnancy, breastfeeding, illness. You know, all of that illness sort of is thing. important because you've yeah. got to make all these antibodies out of protein. That's right. Uh, severe burns get get yes. they they I mean you know that's a very small population, but they actually. But even sunburn, if you mm. get sunburn, you got to you know repair your body from that. Yeah. You know, you go to the gym and disgracefully destroy your body. Mm. Uh, it's got to rebuild with protein. No, we, re- protein is a repair. It's a repair yeah. um, macronutrient. So you've and got detox. to think of that. And detox and detox, which I do bang on about a little bit because there are so many more plant-based people now. And if they don't have, as you said, a balanced diet, they really do. I see a lot more of them with issues. And antioxidant, because glutathione, the potent antioxidant, yeah. is made of cysteine, um, uh, cysteine, glutamine, and glycine. Yeah. So, so I mean, that that's a, a potent antioxidant. Yeah, and we produce glutathione. Yep. It's our ma- ma- master antioxidant, but it's depleted so easily in a toxic world and if yeah. you have illness and things like that. So you really want to make sure you're giving your body the best chance to give them the precursors to glutathione as well. Wow. Yeah. Well, awesome, Nick. Yeah. Well, that's about all we've got time for, but what an incredible story. You know, we've told people how to how to boost their protein if you're a vegan, which is the ones we're concerned about. And mm. if you're not a vegan and you're eating animal proteins a couple of times a day, you should be all right. But if you've got these, you know, if you're aging or you're pregnant or you're something, mm. Mm. you know, go to the gym exercise, you need more protein. Yeah. And I think a lot of the general population probably need more than they think as well. And we try to get that across too, that you, you can be protein adequate but not protein optimal. And you want to be optimal you want to be optimal. optimal health. We're so. all about optimal health, not just getting by. Yeah. So and RDIs are, are not exactly... No, they're they're um, the minimum, my, minimum to I'm not survive. A fan. <laughs> they're not, they're not for, for thriving, RDIs. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we thought we'd sort of give, give a basic for people sort of still getting their head around protein and what's, what yeah. to do, what not to do. And if you're what, sick and you, have. Yeah, you've got fevers, you need more protein to make yeah. more immune... Yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to do another one on, on the what roles the amino acids like. Yeah, we're going to break down all the amino acids, which is going to be super interesting. So that'll all be coming up down the track. Yeah, like, yeah. they're sort of little medicines on their own, aren't they? They are. We're not going to give too much away. No, it's, it's going to be, be fun. Coming. All right, Nick, well, we'll see you all next week. Yeah, thanks, guys. See ya.